Hey guys, welcome to another anatomy video and today we'll be discussing all the muscles that are associated with the eyeball as well as the uh, lacrimal apparatus. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. So here again we have another sagittal cut of the eyeball and we can see all the different tunics found within and some of the chambers and we can see the retina just perfectly fine. Um, but we can also now see um, all sorts of muscles that surround the eyeball. Now you can also see this tissue that's out front of the eyeball, and I'm sure you guys already know, but those are the eyelids. We have the superior eyelid, and then the inferior eyelid. And there's a muscle that I want to focus on that actually helps move the superior eyelid. If you turn your attention to the superior portion of the image, you can see this belly, this muscle belly coming up and then it kind of inserts into the superior eyelid. This muscle is called the levator palpebrae superioris muscle. Again, when this muscle is contracted, it, it lifts up the superior eyelid. Now, directly deep or inferior to the levator palpebrae superioris muscle, we have our next muscle belly and it stays on top of the eyeball. This muscle is called the superior rectus muscle. Again, rectus meaning straight, superior means on top. So this is the straight muscle that's found on top of the eyeball. Now if we turn our attention to the very bottom of the eyeball, we see a similar muscle coursing down inferiorly to the eyeball. This one's going to be called the inferior rectus muscle. And we also have two extra muscles called the medial rectus muscle and the lateral rectus muscle, which aren't shown in this model, but I'll show you in a different image. But as you can assume, the medial rectus muscle is on the medial side of the eyeball and the lateral rectus muscle is found on the lateral side of the eyeball. Now before I go ahead and move on, there is a muscle belly located directly inferior to the inferior rectus muscle. And it's kind of weird because it kind of comes in from a different angle. And this muscle originates from the medial aspect of the eye and then it inserts actually into the lateral rectus muscle. This muscle that's kind of coursing transversely is actually called the inferior oblique muscle. Now we actually have a superior oblique muscle which I'll show in the next image. In this image, we can see the superior rectus muscle. We can also see this lateral rectus muscle that I mentioned earlier. And the way I know that's because the nose would be in this region over here. So I know this is more lateral compared to the medial side of the eyeball. But you can also see this muscle located right here. It's much larger than what I've circled, but it's, only, but it's the only clear shot I can see from this photo. It comes over from the medial side, wraps around and inserts on the top of the eyeball. And it actually inserts under the belly of the superior rectus muscle. This strange muscle that comes from the medial aspect and then back around to the top of the eyeball is called the superior oblique muscle. Now, unlike the inferior oblique muscle, the superior oblique muscle has an additional landmark that actually helps it make that turn onto the top of the eye. This is called the trochlea of the superior oblique muscle, and it acts like a hook or even like a, like a loop that allows it to loop around from the medial aspect and then back towards the lateral aspect and then on top of the superior portion of the eyeball. So if I go ahead and erase this right here, you can kind of see it more clearly. So right here, what I'm um, outlining in red, this is going to be the trochlea of the superior oblique muscle. Perfect. Now the last thing I want to point out before I move away from this image is that there's lots of fat around the eyeball. And this fat that surrounds the eyeball is called the orbital fat body. And there's some fat kind of identified right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and go ahead and label that. Again, any fat that surrounds the eye that kind of helps it keep itself in place is called the orbital fat body. So I've returned to this image because there's a few more landmarks that I need to discuss. 
Between the eyeball and the eyelids is a transparent mucous membrane, and it's found between the cornea portions of the superior eyeball and the eyelids themselves. This is going to be called the conjunctival coat. Again, it's a transparent mucous membrane found between the eyeball and the eyelids. So uh, let me go ahead and draw you kind of what I'm talking about. So right here in purple, we have that specialized mucous membrane. And it's found between mostly the cornea and the eyelids. It's found between those two areas. This is the conjunctival coat. The conjunctival coat can be broken down into three different parts. The conjunctival coat that's found on the eyelids is going to be called palpebral conjunctiva. Again, because it's found on the eyelids, that's why we call it palpebral conjunctiva. The portion found more directly on the eyeball is going to be called bulbar conjunctiva. Now where the bulbar conjunctiva and the palpebral conjunctiva come to this angle, where I'm coloring in blue, this is called the superior or the inferior conjunctival fornix. Again, superior and inferior conjunctival fornix. You have to be specific whether it's superior or inferior. And that is just where the, the junction between the palpebral conjunctiva and the bulbar conjunctiva is found. And those are all the different parts of the conjunctival coat. Here we can see a lot of different external organs found around the eyeball. Just a quick review, we have this muscle right here, which is going to be your levator palpebrae superioris muscle. And then we, if we look onto the opposite side where I labeled the levator palpebrae superioris muscle, we see this organ that's actually being cut into two parts. The entirety of this organ is called the lacrimal gland. The two parts of the lacrimal gland have names. They are the orbital part and the palpebral part of the lacrimal gland, but you don't need to know that unless you're taking advanced anatomy. If we go down towards where the nose would be, kind of see this pinkish area right here. This is called the lacrimal caruncle, and this is actually an external feature that you'd see if you look in the mirror. That pink little flap at the corner of your eye, that little pink little flap is called the lacrimal caruncle. If we go back to the eyelids, we can see where they meet right here and right alongside the lacrimal caruncle. These have names where these little corners are. They're called the medial and lateral palpebral commissure. So this one would be the medial palpebral commissure. And this one would be the lateral palpebral commissure. Now just to quickly go over some of the functions of the lacrimal apparatus, which is the entirety of all the lacrimal uh, organs, the lacrimal gland is secreting lacrimal fluid, which courses its way down from the lacrimal gland to the eyeball. And this is what allows our eyes to be lubricated. Every time you blink, you spread some of that lacrimal fluid over the front of your eye so it doesn't get dry. You notice when you do an eye staring contest, your eyes seem to dry out and you just want to blink. That's because this fluid that's secreted from the lacrimal gland is able to lubricate the eyeball. Now this fluid corsets its way from lateral to medial, covering the entirety of the, of the, surface of the anterior surface of the eyeball. Once it arrives to the lacrimal caruncle, the lacrimal fluid can go in either two directions, but let me first clear up some space so I can label it. The lacrimal fluid can enter two different tiny little holes. The first hole and the second hole. The superior one 
is going to be called the superior lacrimal punctum. And the inferior tiny hole is called the inferior lacrimal punctum. The fluid then courses down these little channels. And if you remember from the osteology chapter, when we discussed the different parts of a bone cross section, we remembered that small channels are called canuliculi. So we have a superior and an inferior lacrimal canaliculus. So again, the lacrimal fluid can go either through the superior lacrimal punctum or down into the inferior lacrimal punctum. They course the way through the lacrimal canaliculi and then it end here. This is called the lacrimal sac. The lacrimal sac then drains into a duct that goes down and this duct is called the nasolacrimal duct because it enters the nose. where the lacrimal secretions finally make their way into the inferior nasal meatus, where it's either evaporated or if there's a large collection of lacrimal secretions, it makes your nose run. Now you notice that when you're running in the wind, your eyes begin to flood because there's lots of lacrimal fluid, right? You start to tear up. Well, you also notice that when you cry excessively, your nose runs. It's because that lacrimal fluid is pushed immediately into the lacrimal sac and it drains into the nasal lacrimal duct into the inferior nasal meatus. And then your nose starts to run because there's so much lacrimal fluid that's draining out of your nose. And that's where your nose begins to run. And those are all the different landmarks found in the eye. Hope this video was helpful and you guys take care.